That's right. And that's what that's what the average church is doing today. And the average church member, because they're not mature. So no one can actually touch the keyboard and the presence of God will emit out of it. Because the motive of playing this thing is wrong. The motive is not spirit. The motive is money. But in this last is what God wants to do. God wants to bring back the spirit of life to the church. What a church can learn to wait on God. My wife and I was talking and we're discussing something. How that today when you go to the Methodist, the Presby Church and all, people are leaving to other churches. And why, why are people leaving? Because the Bible says that people shall be willing in the door of thy power. It's one power that makes a generation willing. So that the reason why people are jumping from meeting to meeting because there's no power in where they are. So, beloved of God, for us to reach the peak and the height of the call of God, we need power. So, when we are praying, one of the key things, whenever we close our eyes to pray as a ministry, I see this man of God in our midst, I see the Archbishop. In that whole sign of this. Now it's asking the Spirit of God why. The Lord said, He has given us this man to coach us in the way of power. Because the journey of this ministry is power. That's why we speak the way we speak. That's why, you see, until you understand where God has placed you, the spirit of that place can never rest upon you. I went and I were having a discourse when you came earlier. And also that today the average person is jumping from one church to another because we don't understand the systems of God, the pathways of the spirit. The pathways of the spirit is that David should be attached to Benjamin. That's his tribe. The pathway of the spirit is that Issachar should be relevant because there's a day coming that they will be able to discern the times and the seasons of God. And that's a stretch. So when they came together, they all from Israel. But everybody had a role to play that was relevant to an eternal cause. The average church today, though, that doesn't have any focus on an eternal cause. Why am I in Ephesus? Why am I in this ministry? There's this, the, the ministry should know where they are going to. You cannot preach everything. There's a role in the body of Christ. And as this ministry, one of the roles God has given to us is to spearhead the move of God coming. That is why we are so concerned with God's presence. We are so concerned with prayer. That's why all those who are here, you are drafted by God in the spirit to be connected. It's a spiritual force. So I'll give you shepherds after my own heart. Not you choosing, I'll give you. Who will feed you with knowledge. Because the strength of every shepherd is to feed you with knowledge. And that knowledge is to align to the counsel of God for your life. I'll share with him how that Pastor Benny, this is a great man of God we all admire. But his spiritual father was a mother. That was Catherine Coleman. Doesn't make sense. But in the ways of God, so he, made, he said he made a lot of mistakes in his journey because he started switching to other streams. So there was one message Pastor Ben he preached. It's called streams. Know your stream. Know your stream. And he was talking about the errors he made because he wanted to preach faith. He wanted to preach prosperity. But that wasn't his stream. So the more he tried to do it, the more he, he struggled. But when he aligned to his spiritual mother, Catherine Coma, be healed, everybody will be healed. Whether he lies now, everybody will be healed. Because that's his shit, that's his anointing. And today, that's why Paul was saying in the book of Ephesians. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That you may know what is this, the hope of this calling. We have to understand what is the hope of this calling. And what's the riches of the inheritance in the saints. That's the problem. We need to understand. Understanding today is not there. Understand. Understand. I can hear me. Understanding today is not there. Understand. Today we just think that Christianity is Christianity. Every church, every church. Every... Listen, Bible says when Moses had come of age, he decided not to become the he decided not to become the son of Pharaoh. His age. Is it? That's why some of you, as you begin to mature, there's a lot of demands that Lord will place on you. Now the Lord will leave this place because you're becoming a tight, you're living and you're connecting. 
Abraham had to only become as long as he left his father. Forgive me. <coughs> Man of God, can you, can you do the video of the cross of my majesty? Uh, very well, that for the past days, yes. So Abraham, the way his father, biological father, was terror. And terror means delay. The only way for Abraham to succeed in his calling was to leave Terah, his father. It was painful by Yahweh. That's why in this spirit life, it's not about feeling, it's about the voice of God. Many has, have missed it in the name of feelings. And they have left the voice of God. There are a lot of casualties today because many are working in feeling more than obedience. But the Bible says that to obey is better than to sacrifice. Obedience is the call of this thing called Christianity. Hearing the voice of God is the key thing to this thing called Christianity. So if you are here, you cannot hear God concern little, little matters. And you want God to use you across the nations. What if there's a death trap? How do you come out of it? It's because we lack men who can hear from God. We lack men who can hear. Jesus Christ based his ministry on raising men. Not on just fellowshipping with men or having programs with them, but raising men. Sometimes whenever I want to even do something, else, the Lord says, hey, son, I call to raise men. Not activity raise men. Men who can tarry long, eight hours in my prayer. That's where power is. Men who can seek my face and seek my presence. That is where the glory of the church is. The glory of the church is in the closet. The glory of the church is in the upper room. It's in the waiting place. But today, few people can wait on God. We are so busy bodies. And we don't make time for this man called Jesus. The average believer, you have one pie, one hour, two hours. A revival is not pitched on one hour and two hours. Revival is hinged on spending time with God. With God. So that's why in this meeting, I'm able to foresee, look at the graces of God. I see. I don't struggle to see the grace of God. If there's anything, if there's anything I don't struggle in, it's how to discern the grace of God upon people. I don't struggle. It's my calling, it's my anointing. That's my calling. I remember years ago, someone texted me after the message. Say, man of God, whenever I see you, I see callings. Recently, I was just there, I was talking to her. I went, a man of God called me. Say, man of God, one of the key things the Lord has given you, he said, in this year, I see the fatherhood anointing come upon you. And one of the key things the Lord is giving you is callings and the gifts of the Spirit. We don't struggle. It's, it's, it's what we eat. But for these things to be stirred up, it takes men who can wait on him. We need to wait. We need to wait. Like this meeting, sometimes it, it, it pains my heart because there's a time can we will not get this privilege again. That's the truth. You see, the Lord, I woke up this morning, I was, I was in a vision and I saw the great man of God, Apostle Arimo side. And I was wondering how I saw him. I was just praying. I said, why am I seeing this man? I was working with him. We were doing everything together. Then the Lord said that, what calling have I called him into? Remnant network Christians. He's raising men. That's what I showed you. There's a link between you and him. Because there's nothing new under the sun. And what the message he preached is revival. The move of God. He has been talking about the, every message, the move of God. How he encountered the move of God from campus. So now, the same message. All his messages are geared towards the move of God. His church setting is towards to raise men. They can go, they'll be praying for 14 hours. No church does those things. But that's a, that's a church setting, that's a culture God has given him. That's, a, just a, that's the same culture I'm giving him. Raise men. Some of them will not be with you. Some of them will go and do their ministries. Some of them will be with you. Just raise them up for these last days. Because if not, our, our, because if not, the people will perish because of lack of knowledge. Our generation will be wiped away because there are no giants standing. Who can hear God? Who can hear God? 
beyond the odds, they can hear God. And, they can hear the voice of God saying, take your money and invest here. No. Because all of us, we are following the natural world, cosmos. So you're going to deal with the, 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 the focus cosmos. The, the cosmos, cosmos. Is the word cosmos actually means the world. Listen, there are three Greek words used for world. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 1. Can someone read it for me? Hebrews chapter 2, verses... No, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2. Sorry. I'll be very fast. I've also told me, your boy, the young man, do you? And someone there, Hebrews. Bible say, but in this last days, no, he has spoken to us by his son. Whom he appointed, yeah. he appointed her all of all things. And through what? And through whom also he has made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of his glory. Yes, continue. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. Sustain all things by his powerful words. After he has provided purification for sin. What, what version is that? NIV. I want King James. Yeah, in this one, we don't use NIV. But you must know my spirit, my mind. It's King James. King James or passion or amplify now. Except God wants the NIV. Okay, can you read it for me? How do you mean? Yes, from verse 1. God, who had sundry times and in diverse manners. Speak in time past, what? Unto the fathers. What? By the prophets. Had in this last day spoken unto us by his son. So listen, the language of God in this end time is the son. And the son is grace. That's why grace is shed abroad on every side. The language of God is the sun right now. So if ever you want to hear God, watch the sun. But continue for me, man of God. So whom he had appointed heir over all things. By whom also he made the worlds. Who be the brightness of his image. What? Of his glory. The express image of his person upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, he made that that is fine. But we say that Jesus Christ was made heir of all things to the world. The word world over the years was aeon. And aeon means the unbreakable ages, perpetual ages. The same scripture, we can see the same word, Greek. We are looking at the Greek words now. We can see the same Greek word in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world, the God of this aeon, age. So we are in a certain age as a church now. We had the early days. You are also in a certain age. That we had A P A D. When you take your time, you read, you see church history. A P B the Bible. A P before Christ. All these things. I remember you are in a certain age as well. And that is the first. That's how the world mentioned is is world. Luke chapter two verses one also shows us another type of world. We have aeon. We have cosmos. And we have oikonomia. We are looking at these three things. But we are addressing cosmos today. But I want us to understand because the calling of God is upon most of you. And what you need is understanding to the word of God. What is the hope of this calling? Woman of God, press it for me. Luke 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days. 
Then went, then went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should pay. Say all the world. This is tax. But he said all the world. And the Greek word for the world over there, or economia, which means every part of the earth inhabited by human being. And today you are also paying tax. Everybody is paying tax. So we've seen the first one. We've seen in Hebrews, it talks about ages. The second one starts talking about the inhabitant parts. That's all. So that's why when you're reading about you need the light of the spirit. Not everything is the same. And now we're looking at cosmos. Mark chapter 16, verses 15. Can you go there? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach. The word world over there means cosmos. And cosmos stands for the system, the structures of the world. And Bible is saying that in the book of 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, that the God of this world, of this age, so there's a God in charge of the cosmos, every cosmos. Because of the fall of Adam. But I want us to read the book of Psalms. Psalm 24. Verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world. The world. And they that dwell in it. So everything belongs to the Lord. The Lord is it? Even the breath in the devil is from the Lord. So in as much as the devil is in charge, but the Lord is Lord over all. But you see, when you read the book of Matthew chapter 4, verses 8, can you go there? Those online, I hope you can all hear me. Then the, the devil take him into a an exceeding high mountain and shows all the kingdoms of the world. So the world has kingdoms and shows him all the kingdoms. And the world world over the use over them is cosmos. And in Genesis chapter one, what happened was a man was giving dominion over everything. On the earth, man was the god of the earth and of the world, but by reason of the sin, he transmitted to the devil. That's why the devil had rights to tell Jesus that if you were to bow before me, I'll give you also all the kingdoms of this world. So that's how now the devil has become the lord of the other world, the systems. Everything today, listen, Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, 19, verses 8. Also, I want to go there for me. He said unto them, He said unto them, Because of hardness of your Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. So Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. From the beginning, there was no so. From the beginning, there was no so. But something happened in the beginning. When those who go to Bible school, we have something called the, the, the gap theory. In Genesis chapter 1 and then chapter 2, there's a gap theory. Can you go to Genesis 1? Genesis 1 verses 2. Genesis 1 verse 22. Genesis 1 verse 22. And the earth was without No, Genesis chapter 1, start from verse 1. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Said the heavens and the earth. Created the heavens and the earth. But God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without void. So why we say that now look at it too. In the beginning, God created. Then now verse 2 said now the earth was without what happened. So in theology, those who have been at the little Bible school I went to, there's something called a dark theory. 
we sat there happy in one day. Because in the beginning, God created. Then now the studio said that now the earth and the and the, it was it was without form. The earth was without form and void. The original the Greek was a tohu and bohu. It was empty. It was not a catastrophe on the face of the earth. And something happened. That's called a gap theory. That's a lot of people want to end time to those ages and see what happened. That's the realm of angels. That's where Lucifer fell. That's that's the issue between Lucifer and the angels and all. And today, a lot of people want to enter at those dimensions. You don't enter there. You don't take it. You encounter that spirit. So it's enough. That's why like some of them, the Bible is not complete. God is wise that what you have is enough. If Peter said that silver and gold I don't have, such as I have, there's one word of God I can raise there. Come out. If it was able to raise the dead, the word of God is enough for you. If you well know then the bohu, tohu, all these things, how many dead can you raise from that bohu, tohu? It's not about bohu, tohu. It's a letter of God telling you how to reach me in all of storm. So the strength of the word of God is enough. So the Bible speaks about how that Genesis, we saw something mysterious. And the focus of God was Adam to have dominion. But in the beginning, something meant something happened. So when you take your time to read Genesis, Bible said evening and morning was the first day. Let me just read a scripture like that in Genesis chapter one. And God said, "Let there be light." Sorry, and God called the light day and the darkness night. And God called what? And God called the light day. He called the light day. That's the sun. The darkness he called night. The darkness he called night. In the evening and the morning was the first day. And the evening and the morning was the first day. The wisdom of God. Our journey begins in the evening. So when it's 6 p.m., it's the first day. That's the system of God. But because the God of this world, something happened. I made you understand Genesis. Something happened. Then he took over. He brought his own institution. So today, we see day at 6 a.m. And night. As, and that's where they operate. They operate in the night. So instead of us we watching in the night, we are tired from normal work. And we are, that's why in the evenings, most people have strange attacks in the evenings. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. That's the operating force. When we should be watching, when we are sleeping. So that's why the Jews, they have their own calendar. This calendar we are having today is not... There's a, even the church, we have our own calendar as a church. The Jews, they have their own calendar. The Muslims, I believe, they also, I like those who have their own calendar. It's the God of this world. Everybody now has their own calendar. That is why the other day in the book of Mark, Acts, Acts chapter 1, verses 6 downwards. Can you read it for me, man of God? Yes. When they therefore were come together. When they when they therefore had come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of what Israel? He said unto them, It's not for you to know the times and the seasons where the father has put. In his own power. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria. Yes. So, what these disciples were acting for was the times and the seasons. They wanted to inquire from God the calendar of the church. But in the book of Genesis, he made the sun, the star, the moon for seasons. And it was prophetic. Jesus Christ is the son of righteousness. So he's the son of righteousness. The church is the moon. We draw our light from Jesus Christ. The moon also draws its light from the, from the sun. And we have the stars. The stars stands for the mature believers, the overcomers. That's why in Revelation we saw, we saw stars in Revelation. 
and it spoke about those who overcame. But there's that start of mature believers, those who are overcoming in their time. And we are asking for times and seasons. And Jesus Christ was trying to say that the times and seasons will only come with those who can have fellowship with me. They can know the times in which we are in. So the way the church will decode our times and our seasons is by the presence of God. You are walking with God all of a sudden, you realize that no, this season is a time to press into God. No, this season is a time to, for me to marry. Once you miss those kind of seasons, you have missed a lot in the realms of the Spirit. But it will only take our communion with God to find out and to know the seasons in which we are in. In this season, there's a grace of God upon your life. When you miss that season, you have missed it. I knew last year that it was my season for, for me to get married. I knew it. As I pressed him, I just knew, I didn't have my, I just knew that no, it is time. And I know it's my season to start this thing called ministry. I knew it is time. But it came by fellowship. It came by fellowship. At the point I was in the house. I knew it was season for preparation. Because the man kept seeking them. The Lord said, sit down and learn. I didn't understand. I remember when I went to preach in Kumase. I came to Accra. I was jumping all over. I'll go from meeting to meeting, jumping. Then a lot appeared into my dream. He held, I'll not forget that he held me. So why you go me? Sit down. Voices don't roam. They sit down and they are made by me. If you want to hear a voice, sit down and wait for me. It's painful, but that's how to make it. The Lord said unto my God, sit down at my right hand until I make that enemy that you stole. And that's why I realized that life is beyond me. I saw which is my family. I saw powers who are in my family where they try to distort me from pursuing this thing called the call of God. Imagine I didn't sit down and wait on God. And all these things I'm saying with you, I had to sit down to learn them. Just sit down. You cannot be light in the spirit. You cannot be like any man of God. Just doing ministry, having no more. You must know the clear path and what I'm calling you for. And for you to know it, you must sit down. Because confidence is guarded when you know. Because they that who they that know their God, they shall be strong. That's confidence. That big believer is talking about it. He doesn't know what he's about. Jumping from one church to one, jumping from one thing to another. Today is applied for this job because you're not confident in God. You are not confident. I remember at that point, I was not even confident. I was applying for jobs here because I was still scared. So it was just last day the Lord said that now you are ready. Because I settled my spirit, this is it. I'm not looking back, I'm not looking left again. I'm paying attention to the calling. So now you are past the test. Now you can now marry. Because without focus, and the lady comes in their picture, why are you going? Why are you taking her to? You cannot just be tossed to and fro by any wind of doctrine. Very focused in life. Know the impulse of what is your assignment. A lot of men of God don't know the assignment. It's the abomination. issue. What's the call of God upon your life? So you don't take your message to end up by copying message. I cannot copy someone's message. What I preach, I can't copy them. It's born from within me. These are things that God has taken us through to become. So what we preach is what we have become. In the book of 1 John chapter 1 verses 1, said that what was in the beginning, you have seen that which you have heard, which our hands have handled and we have moved upon of the words of life. Is that what you communicate to you? What have you handled? What have you handled in the spirit? You see, beloved, listen, God needs us to be in sync with him in this end time. The prophetic is not I see your name. No, that's the gift. The prophetic is knowing what heaven is doing at this time. That's the prophetic. Is knowing what God has for you in such is that a prophetic? But I hear this, I hear this. No more. Are you in team with God? Not a prophetic. Is there any? Are you in team with God? Where you are working, are you in team with God? Can you even design why you are working there? These are sons. Sons don't waste their time. They know why they are, they are there. Things don't happen to them coincidentally. They know why we are here. So they can take advantage and juice and release God as much as they have to do. I knew how, where I was working. When I was in my life, I knew it. My boss, everybody started reading books because of me. I knew that I was, I was an ambassador over there. I didn't waste my time over there. 
I knew that I was not going to stay there before the national service. I had left. Because that was not my stay. If I stayed, I was shut the call of God upon. I didn't waste my time. That if you don't know, then begin to roam about. Doors to and fro by everyone of God. Beloved, I want you to understand that their cosmos today is fractured. Their systems are not to favor us. Everything is meant to pull Christ out of you and I. That's the system the devil has put in place. We have schooling. You go to school, you don't take care. Your spiritual life will just go down. Nothing is meant today, even look at what they are seeing in schools. Someone was saying, one of my sons, I was in the country. Today, in the US, a small girl can tell she wants to change her agenda. And these are things that are coming. That's why, listen, most of you are in the US, the banks are crashing today. Because where sin is, the Lord tests where sin is. But the church must now descend the times in which we are in. We are not in normal times. We are in times, listen, these are the times that God is raising a lot of men. These are seasons. I used to hear from an apostle, he said, the Lord is raising men. These are times, listen, in the next coming years, these are times God will release the apostles, most of the apostles. That's why even after the COVID, most of the apostles were released. All the years in the wilderness, that's what they mean. Imagine they're not prepared. Imagine some of them to be waiting on God. We are still applying for jobs here and there, looking for where, look, just looking for mundane things. Imagine. And in the midst of the COVID, that's why you had my, we heard of my corrupt for apostles, they do, we heard all of them. And we are talking about how they wasted their life. I remember I was listening to a message by Apostle Ramon, he said, Wasted men. They kept wasting. They kept wasting. At a point in my life, I, I felt like I was losing something. Because this was the thing that has made me understood what it means to waste on God. You are told one year nothing, you are just praying, every day praying, seeking the face of God. But then we start hearing messages of, You must do this, you must do this. I mean, I said, No. What I was hearing is not my kind of message. My calling is aligned to wasting. I remember when my sons called me and he said, Also, I know we have to be thinking. Of, eh, eh. Son of God, if you are not this grace, you must learn to waste. This guy said, Prophesy. I said, Prophecy does not come until you waste your life. Being a soldier in this third time doesn't just come just like that. You must learn to waste on God. For you to say, That's here, the Lord be healed. It must come from the womb of someone who has waited on God enough. Today we don't have visions again. We don't have encounters again with God. Encounters were born out of men who wasted their lives. A certain point of which falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it yields more fruit. Some of your parents will be insulting you. I just was all this was up with yourself. What are you doing here? It's not news I was also found over there. I'm not with something. This is a church. I'll go to another church, but I realized that there was a hunger in my heart no church was able to meet. When I sit on my spiritual father, he was always reviving me. Wait on God. We will go, he locked the door. We are still speaking tongues. I was, I was telling him, we will start praying from 10 to 6. Like that. That's what has made some of us. I remember in one of the meetings, people were losing weight instant. These are things that can happen in imagination. To the all this prophecy and I your name. There are dimensions, so people were losing eyes over eyes, people were losing weight. These are things that happen when people are lost in glory. When the generation is lost in glory, anything is possible. Then they can come back to life because they are lost in glory. A lot of actually, we are, we are limiting the hand of God because of self. This thing called self is destroying a lot of destinies. This thing called the mind is destroying a lot of destinies because of the fractured cosmos. You see, the world has the, the world is so subtle that gradually it is entering into the church. Even the church today, we find cosmos in the church, systems in the church. And the whole agenda of system is to block the life of God. Because the life of God doesn't know systems. 
it breaks through. It, it's like the four rivers that parted their head. It can break through at every point in time. Just tell revive her up. That's the life of God. We can meet here and there. One of the angels will start appearing. And will start speaking. And we hear songs of angels. We hear tongues of angels. But all these things are lost. But it's the normal lifestyle of the church. The normal lifestyle of the church is the supernatural. I run, if I say, let's close our eyes, I hear the Lord speaking. I see an angel who find people struggling to enter into that dimension. Because cosmos has taken our mind. Cosmos has taken a portion of our hearts. So I say, let's close our eyes and wait on God. Now somebody waits. The Holy Ghost wants to speak to the person who has to wait. Get God, God. Talk for hours before the Holy Ghost move. And this is the normal language of the church. We are shocked. You go to a fetish, a fetish fetish. Within one minute, you can switch into their spiritual realm and tell what's happening. But the church, you have to now wait on God hours. No, in the days of manifestation, in the days of confrontation, we don't wait on God for hours. We display power. In this time, that's when we wait on God. And at these times are for waitings. When we step out and we see the cripple, it's not down a less pray. No, we lay hands. And we talk about the words we speak, the aspect in their life. You see, the reason I'm speaking this way is because these are things the Lord said. I saw a vision years ago. And when I want to still stretch from the vision, the Lord says, Hey, you can't. I saw good people, I'll not forget that vision. We we're walking. I saw another road in the heavens and we we're walking. And I saw them raising the dead, healing their sick. I said, What's happening? Then a prophecy is said, I saw the book of Acts written. He said, Don't take care, you must begin another book of Acts. You begin another book of Acts. You must continue that book. So that's why, with this heart, what we've seen, until you see, you can never preach. The reason why you dress because you've not seen yet. Our generation today, most of us who have seen dreams and visions, so but we are drifting because our conviction is not strong enough. The early days, just one dream could change a man's destiny. Apostle Paul changed his whole destiny by an encounter. Today we've had encounters, but yes, our, our lives are not changing. Three months we're on fire. The next five months, everything goes off. All this is I'm speaking. You spoken about it. One month you're on fire. It's amazing the Lord will tell somebody, follow this man of God. The next man said, I'm in this church. I said, ah, conviction level is low. How can God speak about greater matters? If this little thing, you're not being able to stay faithful through it, then you want greater matters? You want the secrets of God? Forget it. You're not, you're not legend. You're not legend enough. So most of God cannot trust us. Their little speakings, live here, come here. You cannot even do it. You are struggling. Mother, father. Also, we go to the book of Luke for me. Luke chapter 12, verses 50 downwards. Luke chapter 12, verse 50. 50. Verse 5, 0. But I, have but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how I am focused, I'm straightened until this thing is accomplished. Continue, sir. Supposing that I have come to give peace to myself. I have to bring peace to you. Say, nay. I tell you, nay. I'd rather, rather division. Listen, I'll talk about wrong. When it comes to the world of God, it's division, no. Oh, ba, 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 ba. That's some of you. That's why for the first time you tell mommy, mommy, I'm sorry. I'm going. <laughs> you gave back to me, I'm sorry. It's our destiny now. You see, if if men of God don't even understand this, they'll preach loving messages. You must honor. At the, you must honor. It's good to honor. At that point, we honor. We, we, we dishonor to honor. And that dishonor says, I'm insulting you. But I'm taking my part. But yes, you understand why I took that part. But for now, I must dishonor you. It's my good. I have to dishonor my father for my good. How to dishonor my mother for my good? If I listen to them, I will not shall be here. 
And the point you need to dishonor men for good. And dishonoring doesn't mean that you are insulted. There's a difference. In your mind, they have seen it as dishonor. But in the mind of God, God is seen as obedience. That is it. You see, we have, we have, we have laid certain yastics. In the eyes of men, what we think is dishonor is never dishonor in the sight of God. Because God looks in the hands. He looks beyond us. But men, they judge from the outward. I, 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 you let you dishonor, you don't respect your mother. That's why, as men of God coming, you must be careful the kind of message you preach. You must know him before you talk about dishonor, loyalty. Who defines loyalty? It's God who defines loyalty. It's God. It's not on the basis of, of these things. I tell people, I, I tell men of God, the fact that this guy was with you. You must understand that in the realms of this, why he disclosed to you in such a time like this. It doesn't mean you'll be there always. There are some who will be there always, you must know. If he leaves, it doesn't mean he has rebelled. In the calendar of God, God wanted him to leave for an assignment. Except you're supposed to be there. And these are rules. And because of the fractured cosmos, the world system, we are brought in. What's, what's, what's English language? The language of the Father was the Son, not English. The language of the church today must be the spirit. Because so you must not judge anything before it's time. You don't just judge because you think you've gone to school. Why is this man of God doing this? Shut up if you don't know. If God has not spoken to you in the spirit, keep quiet. If you are spoken to you, then you can have a say in judge. Because you are called to judge. So the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, in the book of God, Ephesians chapter 6, how that we ought to honor our father and our, our parents. And apostolic COVID, you are not coming break those laws. This is it. They are not coming reading this Bible, though. So don't they have come to bring peace? So then God will shake things between mother and father. I remember years ago, I was reading a certain book when I finished school. Because all these things were issues to me. I hear, man of God, you must honor your father, you must honor your mother. And it's good, but I read a certain book. That I'll look for the title. But the key emphasis of the book was David the donkey. And David the donkey had a father, biological father, whose father was a pastor. And he was a donkey because a donkey is used, it's, 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 it's mass produced. So he will run the air around, he will do everything for the ministry. At that point, David the donkey had a voice. And that voice was, I go to school. David the donkey went to the dad. He said, Daddy, I want to go to school. I said, Hey, are well, the donkey. You must do the work of God. You cannot go anywhere. He come and see. The dad, but David the donkey said, Hey, Daddy. They are like, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm still going to school. Or this guy left his father's place, went to school. In the eyes of men, it's called rebellious. It's called dishonor. For one year, he and his dad was not speaking. But after every time that he had gone to school and everything, he and dad were now best friends. Because the dad understood why he had to go to school. Because now the ministry, because the guy was still doing ministry, but the ministry had brought him. Imagine he didn't go to school. You don't know how to speak good English. You don't attract certain helpers. The ministry was all over the place. He got to a point he was about to get married. He came to the dad, how to get married. The dad started another banter. Say, hey! I want this particular person. Say no. The same God I heard and I left. I'm hearing him again. That's the person I want to marry. They argue, they argue, the argue that I was not talking again. The guy married again. Give birth. Hell the children. They are best friends here and the dad. In the beginning, the dad don't understand. But sometimes in the human mind, in the cosmos system, they have their own agenda, they have their own plan for us. As the Bible said, said children, parents, raise your sons according to the ways of God. There's a way that God is calling you to. And they must raise you, they must raise you in alignment to that will. You see, in the world today, what I'm doing today, at the point I was very disturbed my ministry, very disturbed as a child of God. But I hear this thing that and sat and yet man and yes, it don't work. You must not eat. And it's in the Bible, Thessalonians. Say, God, you must not eat. 
So you hear people saying that as a man of work, you cannot go full time, you must go and work. At least let the ministry get to a certain point, then you switch to full time. Who brought all those laws and systems? Jesus Christ, did he work? He went full time. Is that right now? Why well, he went full time? But they are using Apostle Paul and they are sick. Beloved, in this accord, you must see the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, when you go to the book of Genesis, the first time work was mentioned, somebody read the book of Genesis for me. Chapter 2, verse 2. Thank you, the course. And on the seventh day, and on the seventh day, God what? Ended his work. The first time work was mentioned was he said God ended his work. And what was the work Jesus was doing? Does someone tell me what was he doing? Let there be. His work was talking. Life be. When be. His work talking. So who defines work to be this? Who defines work to go to office and come back? You see, we have to define work. What I'm doing is work. To share this with you, you have to stay all night steady. His work. Jesus can define work. And his work was let there be. Now that today you can be a generous as work. I get money from it. It's your work. So why is it only a man of God? Talking is not a work. That's the whole thing. And it's, it's entry to the average believer. Oh, no, make a side thing. This thing is work. I was talking. Someone said, I was healed. It's work. She has been a president before. So now, before you preach, I was born by five hours. So I said, I was blessed. It's not, the, it's not the English she was saying, no. The energy that was released. So, told this thing is not work. Who defines work? So, you must be very careful you listen to in this end time. You must be very careful the kind of messages you listen to, the kind of push you expose yourself to, defines work. I was reading this and I said, no, who defines this thing called work? Is it God or man? But the cosmos has, has laid certain rules. If you are not in alignment in that rules, you are not part of it. But beloved of God, for us to take over the world, we must go back to the beginning. What was it in the beginning? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 5. As said, if I form thee and knew thee, how your mother's womb, I ordained thee and I called thee as a prophet. The word ordained over there is from the word Natan. And the word Natan over there means I employed you and I paid you. So this is the divinity of Jesus Christ's work. His definition for work is find your place in the body and fulfill your assignments. So I employed you, Natan. I ordained you. Is somebody there? Jeremiah chapter 1. Have you seen it? Jeremiah chapter 1. Yes. I thee in the belly. So before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb. Before thou out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee. And I ordained thee. The word ordained over there is from the Greek word, from the Hebrew word. What does it Hebrew? Natal. And the word Natal means I employed you and I paid you. This is how Jesus Christ understands things. He told the 12 disciples, he said, go. Don't take pears. Don't take any extra clothes. The laborer is worth the hire. Matthew chapter 10. Who want to go read for me? Matthew chapter 10. Verse 2 that was. But then go down, switch. Verse chapter 1. Verse 1, sorry, I mean, chapter 10, verse 1. Chapter 10, verse 1 is when you mention the place of the disciples. Then go down. Mention where he said they should go. Okay. okay. And, he, as, and as he go, as he go, preach the kingdom of heaven. As he go. He said, preach the kingdom. Preach. As you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. Cleanse the lepers, cleanse the cast out the most 
cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold. Said, provide neither gold, that's what's money. Yes. No. Don't go and work and bring one that out spawn I can so I can take care of myself. Said, no, don't do that. That's that's a curse to my gospel. So don't try and do that. So today the mental person said, I must work so I can spawn on a ministry. You are under a case. Tell your own provider now. That's a case. Lay ministry. Who brought it? That's a case. That means you are providing. You want to find ways and provide for yourself. The book we have read, all those who are reading the book, they're touch on the soil. Except for seven good years, he missed purpose. Is that the books I sent you? They are strategic. You must read them. Otherwise, you never grow. For seven years, because when he started ministry, he failed. He thought he was failing. He was not having members. <laughs> the wife said, I, I will not have your members. The Lord has called you. So he felt like, okay, then let me go and work. So he left, he started working for seven good years. But he said he doesn't want to take offering. He wants to take off everything for the ministry. I appeared to him. The Lord said, no, you miss my purpose. The Lord said, leave your job. So the, the, Lord, the Lord had to make his job go bankrupt. And he went down zero. He said, now go back, start the ministry. The Libra is worth the high. Look at the perfect message we are being here today in church. In church. In church. Why a lot of divorce is happening? But for one, the relationship seminar. It's not relationship seminar that helps the church. It's what you are eating. In Genesis, he told, he told, he told them, eat. Adam and Eve never had any counselor. They didn't go through any counseling school. All they had was the tree of life. If both of you can eat the word of God and understand the word of God, marriage will work. And what was on the tree was the fruit of the spirit. If both of you can exercise yourself so strong on the fruit of the spirit, where is anger? What's pride? In the fruit, there's no anger, there's no pride. So how come you have anger and pride? And you are still in church. I'm not serious. I'm not sure this way you belong. And these are the simple things God has made available. We have gone for the Greek Hebrew. Sophisticated things in me are yes, we are dying. Yes, we are dying. We have counselor, counselor one, counselor two, and yes, we are dying. Even the counselor Christ is broken, but he said he's a counselor. Who gave that to you? Called you. And all these things we are facing, the problem is that a generation is not feeding on the word, a generation is not cracking the bones to find out Jesus. Things that have been lost in the picture and program and ministry and title has become the order of the day. Listen, your strength as a man or as a child of God is not the school you are going to. How much of Jesus do you know? Don't say that I'm a decrease, I may increase. How much of Jesus? How much of Jesus? How much of, Jesus? How much of the self is gone? But there's no telling that again. Insult and she's still smiling. The next man she buys you a gift and she's still smiling. Her time is gone. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. This is the realm of the gospel. Never I live. But that's what God can heal through your hands. I'm not looking at yourself. I didn't pray. I see your prayer down make the I didn't read the it's, it's, it's your Bible. Just be obedient and let him flow through. For the life in the church is not your blood. The life in the church is the Holy Ghost. So you can move my daughter, lay hands on this person. Don't look at yourself, just do it for me. But the guilt is when the devil, the devil has made us look at we must even pray for hours. There are days to be honest, there are days of entering into I didn't pray for hours. I entered the Holy Ghost moving. And I asked God, why? I didn't pray for eight hours. I didn't spend time like that. He said, no. I want to be glad. If you can die, that man will flow through you. That's what the power of God is. However, it doesn't mean we really, really get prayer and the word of God. But I'm just trying to show you that it's not your prayer that makes that thing happen. It's me, I need that thing happen. So at the end of the day, no flesh will glorify me in flesh. I mean, I did this, I prophesy. Can you prophesy? Can you heal the sick? Sometimes I, I've been listening to a lot, a lot of healing preachers. And sometimes I'm wondering, how does it work? And I see someone that will lay hands on their eyes. Uh, what's the name? Uh, what's the name? They're blind to see, and I see the blind is still blind. I said, you, you are not in charge. 
is God who is in charge. There are sometimes God can make everybody open their eyes. That's God. But there are sometimes God who says, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Don't claim that anointing as if it's yours. It's mine. I allow it as I will. Yours position yourself. So, beloved, let's, I, want to, I want this to understand that we are in this end time. And the cosmos is gradually building in the church. Like we don't hear all these messages. This we don't hear. I don't remember last time I went to church. I heard this message. To be honest, I don't hear this message. All I hear is money, program, activities, seven ways to do this. And Christ must be communicated. Seven ways. How can seven ways really raise the dead? How can seven ways call somebody? I remember you said when I said working with God. I don't wait for meetings to, for, to lead someone to speak in tongues. As I see, I can make you speak in tongues. That's the normal lifestyle of the church. The average person is struggling. You have to wait for a meeting, wait for a conference before you speak in tongues. Oh. This is how it's dying. You have to wait for a I'm not fast now. Do you know what this is inside of you? The law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of death. As a fornication can break loose. Last can die. Because the more you yield to the spirit, and that something begins to leave you. That thing matters again, my dear. By the way, the cosmos is designed, it's cosmos to always pull us back. It's always designed to make us reasonable, logical. Why are you giving your money to this man? Why are you paying tithes? Why, why, are you, why are you always giving your offering? Why are you giving your fresh food? It doesn't make sense. But those who have the spirits understand what he's doing in the spirits. You know what's happening in the spirits. Those who are givers over years can testify. I've seen the hand of God. I mean, what's shown with me? Is that every day I've been taught, they just shall live by faith. It was difficult for him because his calculation, money must come. <laughs> I must do that and that to make the money work. That's for some time. God just provides. He, just, he doesn't even know what he did the following back from mission comes. That is it. You are too small to take off yourself. Once you get to the point where I have to take off myself, I'm left to that place of dependence. The call of God is dependency. Too. You cannot be independent. Independence is of the devil. That's what any girl here, that's what all these feminists did. We can be independent. And that's the devil talking to you. Independent. There are some things you can never do to satisfy yourself, no matter what you go to. There are some longings in your heart, only a man can do it. Independence. The, the church, we are called to also depend on the Lord. Once we leave that place, we stop praying, we stop asking God for things. That's the end of the church. We are not sufficient in ourselves. Paul said we are not sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as of ourselves. But our sufficient is of him. He's our ability. He's the life within us. He's the flow within us. So we depend on him always. So waiting becomes essential in your work. We don't come here to do conference. When I was, I remember when I was a little I never called my executives. How do you do to make evangelism work? No, no, it's not strategy. Wait and hear him. That's a strategy. Wait a year. So then we have a lot of church. We have a um, committee head, organizer head. So they all think they have a say. I saw Yen Yen and said, Yen Yen, ah, because your church, you can have a say. And the church of the Christ, all of us are going on retreat. What is he saying? We, we do what he's saying. But that's the beauty of Christianity. That's the strength of Christianity. Whenever you are aligned to do whatever he's saying, you are, you are, you are, you are entitled to enjoy his provision. You are entitled. You are entitled to enjoy his provision. And if you do what you want to say, or you bring your mind together to do your own thing, you struggle. You struggle. In the of God, on this one, that the cosmos is fighting us. The system is fighting us. We are at war. Both are doing what in the flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against systems. Your boss, Bob said that in me, the mystery of iniquity does still reign. And iniquity has become a human being and they are living. 
Sin has become a human being right now. Most of the presidents, most of the bosses, they are now, they are now sin personified, living. So some of you don't encroach on your freedom. You encroach on you. And now you go to work at peace, then all of a sudden you are depressed. That's the power of the enemy. That's the power of the world. The world is not to favor you. So you are just there, you are happy. You just step, you see your boss, all of a sudden you're frozen. That's the power of hell fights against you. Hell embodied in a human being without them knowing that they've been, they've, been, they've been cohabited by hell and tormenting the people of God. Because where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. But hell has taken all over the place. Fear all over the place. The system of this world. And the agenda, all this COVID, everything was to come fear. But the church must eat feet. Is that this is the victory of coming the world? They are cosmos. And the Lord knows that the only thing that can overcome this cosmos is faith. And faith coming by hearing is hearing by the word. Hearing. That's why it's very, very important. You give yourself to hearing. The first hearing is with on God. We never saw anyone preach to Abraham. But Abraham was a father of faith. The reason of hearing. What I hear it. So I must teach you to wait on God. I must teach you to press in prayer. You are praying, don't feel like praying. Keep praying. That's prayer. Prayer is not for feelings. It's for doing. I got to a point in my Christian work. It's not about how I feel again. I must do it. It's important. But my destiny is, is tied to what I'm doing today. If I look at my feelings, I'll never arrive to where God is calling me. You must pray. I must fast. I must take the word of God. Feelings are less. They come to hear. Then after that faith, there are another dimension of faith. As I'm speaking, faith is also entering into your heart. It's not every message you hear. What gives birth to faith are grace messages. Grace. When you see the Bible says Abraham was the father of faith. You know, right? Romans chapter 4. Can someone read it for me? Verse 1. So what has our father Abraham found pertaining to the flesh? Yes, please. Shall we, what, shall we say then? what shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, has pertained to the flesh, has found. If Abraham was justified by works, listen to me. Abraham's justification was not by works. He didn't work to get the money. He didn't work before he became the, the father of many nations. He didn't work. So what's hard work? What's making work? If you are here, everything's by your sweat. You're under a curse. That's the truth. Abraham obtained all he obtained. Oh, God, for me. Not by works. Because if it's not by works, he has something to boast about. And most of us, we cannot boast about anything. You see the blessing of God. He said, no, there's, not, there's a grace out to me. There's not simply being labor. We labor. And we labor according to the grace of God I've been one who wants to for me, sir. Abraham, well, if, Abraham were justified by works, if Abraham was justified by works, he had whereof he, he where to glory. He had something to glory about. But not before God. And not before God. He can glorify before God. No, 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 no. For what said the scripture? For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And he was counted on him as righteousness. Well, we'll go to the book of John, chapter 6. Is it verse 16? Holy Ghost, take me there. Um, John 6. It, it talks about the Father. He said that you must work the works of the Father. The eyes, how can you work the works of the Father? John, John 6. Can someone look for that scripture? All of you must Bible Bible study book. Share. I don't need Bible. What what are you saying? Um, how can we work the work of the Father? Yes, 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 yes. Look, I've seen it. John 6, 20, 27. John 27, 29. Labor not for the meat. Which perish? Labor not for the meat. That perishes. 
What is Jesus Christ talking about? What's the meat? The meat is the activity of this world. Say, so labor not for the meat that trouble they can sell you. Labor not for the meat, the businesses, the entanglement of this cosmos that perish it. Continue for the man of God. For that meat, that endured unto everlasting. So there's a certain meat that endures up to everlasting life. And we understand that this meat, Jesus Christ, the, the, the other day when he was hungry, they asked him, Want to go and look for something? He said, My meat is to be well. So meat is not physical meat, it's on the way, it's on the work of God. So say, Labor not for the meat, the works that perish. But labor is a question for me, man of God. And for the meat that endures what? Unto everlasting life. When the son of man shall give unto you. For him had God the Father sealed. For him had God the Father sealed. Continue. Then said, then said the Israel. Then said the. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? To work. So what shall we do that may work the work? And I was talking about work. What shall we do to work the works of God? So there's something called the works of God as well. Continue from the one of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. This is the work of God. Ah. Yes, your statement too. So the work of God is never analyzing. Is it to start your own ministry? In terms of why you in the work of God, you are playing keyboard. Is that the work of God? The Bible is sweet too. Is we have to, is it? We have to get to a point where we wash our eyes with eyes now. Look into the Bible again. The most of us do not read the Bible today. We hear messages and we come to read the Bible with the message we have for yet. We hear those preaching, so as you are reading the Bible, automatically you know the end. Because the man of God has said this, and this eyes must be explained. But they asked, What shall we do to work the works of God? So the works of God is to believe. Because it's not easy to believe. Take no thought for life. So that's the work of God. Believe. Believe that take no thought for life. Believe. I himself took up your infirmity. And the pain is still there. You are in discomfort. It's not easy. He said, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. Believe. These signs and wonders will follow you. This is the work of God. You will see. Believe that you can get to a point where it is real. It's tangible. I can cast the demon. So today, what is the church? What are we doing? Are we doing the work of God? There are three types of work. We have the work of God. We have the work of the ministry. Ephesians talks about the work of the ministry. The work of God is believing. The work of the ministry is executing what you have believed. That's the work of the ministry. But how many ministries are executing their belief? We deem the work as evangelism. But it's a real work. You the sick. Preach the gospel. How many of us can even heal the sick in our workplaces? Your boss can, the Holy Ghost can tell you. She doesn't speak in tongues. You need in here to speak in tongues. You run away from the office. For two days, you give meditation. <laughs> and this is the truth. For two days, you just shake it. You go to your house, that hear God. I didn't hear God. Some people are dying just like that too. Because you're not working the work of God. We are strengthening ourselves in working the work of ministry than the work in the work of God. And this will please the Father. And the Lord can see the Isa. She is sick. We need. Thank you, Jesus. As the demons, 
They said, we are actually in the home. She watched with a certain eye. No. I mean, this is not you speaking. It's another spirit that is speaking. You cast that demon, demon out of here. You know. You know when demons are speaking through men. Jesus Christ knew the work of God to the said, When Peter, who even spoke the word of God, and said, Thou art the Christ, let the demon took over. He said, No, that's a demon told it. That's a demon talking. It's, it's, it's a hard truth, but that's a truth. That's a spirit talking to her. You can see your friend, he's very spiritual, but he's talking somewhere, he's insulting. A spirit has taken over. God's spirit, what, what they, they do is doing habit bodies. So in this world, there are two spirit forces. It's not the spirit of the devil working through us or the Lord. And it's so slippery that it takes the spiritual design that this is God. This is the found, this is the enemy speaking. It's so slippery. In this last days, that God calls us to be spiritual. That to be spiritually minded is life. But to be carnally minded, you are Christian. Ah, you who say, "Oh, yes, serious." Your tongues level is low. Bible is low. It's low, but your activity is high. You are usher, chief usher, chief organizer. But spirituality is zero. In short, you can insult three times. You can be angry and go to church. No, that's a mocks. Because the most, there's no spirit over there. The spirit has no conflict. But in the church, the spirit has conflict. Before you speak, you find a confession power. Keep quiet, son. Keep quiet, daughter. You have no right to speak. It's me I'm working in your heart. There's a prince of the enemy in your heart I want to take out so I can use you well. You can represent me well. Some of the time, the Lord will allow some of you, your bosses will step on your toes. The Lord will allow some things. You use the enemy. And the enemy wants to check whether he, he has something up in you. It's anger still in you. So once you also trigger, enemy plus enemy don't trigger, then division don't happen. If allow the enemy, because division is a part of the enemy, unity is of the spirit. Behold how good and how pleasant it is. For praying to, together in unity is as a precious ointment upon the head of Aaron that descended to the, even the head of his kids. So for there, the Lord commanded their blessings. Oneness. And that means fighting against oneness. Oneness. That is why in the book of Luke, when we're reading, so I don't think I've come to bring peace, but division. Because once the Spirit has a rule in my mother, my father, I'll bring division. Because they are not aligned and they are not in sync with my Spirit. And they want to lead you astray from my will. Therefore, I bring division. Also, for continue that scripture for me, Luke chapter 12, verse 51 downwards. Those online, I hope you are being blessed. If, if you are hearing, if you are, you are hearing of your sin, just give us a feedback, comment. Let me know you are being blessed. Oh, ba 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 ba. Luke chapter 12, verse 51. Verse 51. Suppose he that I come to give peace unto earth. So suppose he that I come to give peace on the earth. I tell you nay. I tell you nay. But rather what? Division. Division. But from henceforth there shall be five in one house. But from henceforth there shall be five in one house. For me and his grandmother and everybody, be five in one house. Divided. Nobody will be divided. Because for me, wants to be a man of God. They be out of stones. Are they? Open the mirror floor. Then division don't happen. They be also with Joseph. Are they? And your friends will never feel. Ah, division don't happen. Division don't happen. Continue for me, sir. Three against two. Say three against two. Tell me. Two against two. Three against two. <laughs> and what? And two against three. And two against three. <laughs> so there is and also against three. The father shall be divided against the son. The father will not divide against the son. And the son against the father. The son and hence why we name the papa. They will divide. They will be any way food. The father against the daughter. The mother against daughter. And what's the mercy? 
I'm going to do what I'm going to do. My friend. The mother-in-law against me. The mother-in-law against me. I mean, they need the man and my man. The daughter in law against the mother. 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 So it is. Yes. And when you see the south wind blow, when you see the south wind also blow, see, there will be a heat. There will be a heat. And if and it's coming to pass. And it's coming to pass. He hypocrites. He hypocrites. He can descend the face of the sky. You can descend it to rain. Even of the earth. And the earth. But how it is that he do not descend this time? How is that you do not descend these times? Yes. And why even of yourself judge him not what is right? Exactly. When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ speaking. The hypocrites. You can tell when there's a wind coming that you win. I cannot tell the times and seasons for your life. I cannot tell. There's not everything that is called delay. And the word today, prayer meet and everything I delay. But it's not you one year say delay. No, no, no. You must understand God's for your life. I need prayers on prayers. Because if I pray a prayer, I say, what's your way for my life in this season? Why am I not unemployed today? Because I'm not able to do all things. And you want my attention this Because once I lose this season, I'm lost at God's. Beloved, I will say in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23. That what? Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. That says the Lord. That says the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his mind. Neither let the mighty what? Man. Man. Glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory glory in his. Let him that glory glory in this. That he understands and knoweth me that I am the Lord. That he understands me. Which exercises loving kindness. Beloved. So if you glory. Don't glow that you bring tongues. Don't glow that you can fast. Because I've seen many who are fasting by yesterday, they don't, they don't know God. Any altar, they are there. Every altar for where you're on the original name. Don't give your life to Christ. Just give the life to Christ three times, but he's still there. <laughs> he does more mistake there. He said, God has forsaken me. He's able to save to the latter. And you small mistake you have done. Let's say if you fornicated and the call of God is upon you, say, I'm living the call of God. You don't know his love for you. If you can bounce back, it's enough for God. You see, in this instance, you must know God. The reason why a man of God you fornicate and you put him on radio is and you quit the ministry because he doesn't know God. That's not that this God is forgiving. Because all this while you are standing on your integrity to do the ministry. You are standing on your own self to that's why that's why you're know, able to go away. The strength of your Christian work, even when you are falling short of his glory, you're able to rise back. That's the quality that you know this man called Jesus. You understand him. And he loves you so much. No matter the mistakes you have done. He loves you so much that when you come back to him, he will give you the prodigal son. But people, a lot of people don't know God. They don't know him. You know judgment more than his love. The strength of this Christian work is his love. Can you stand on his love? Feel on his love. In the garden, 
The tree over there was his love. As the fruit of the spirit is love. Not a lot of things, it was love. Feed on my love. Feed on my love. You love yourself. You are just thinking, ah, you love me. You are meditating. This thing alone can cure cancer. He loves you. How can cancer be in your body? Even when you are yet dead in your own sins, Christ died for you. Christ will die. Cyrus will die. He loves you. That's not me. He would come out of He loves me. Ephesians said that, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Can you go to Ephesians from Ephesians chapter 3? This is our last verse. Ephesians 3. Verse. Just read downwards. Verse 15 downwards. There about. Therefore, Father in heaven and earth. Is of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So there's a family in heaven. Apostle Paul. John. All the fathers who are born, they are waiting for you and I. They are turning you up. Will she give up? Will she give up? Will she swear away? The fornication is high, but will she still stand for the Lord? They are watching her. The family here. They are watching Teresa. For one year, you've not gotten a job. Will you still throw in the towel? Or you still keep you still keep seeking the face of God? She has gotten the job. Will she still seek the face of God? Now check. Wow, that's a daughter. That's a daughter. When the money comes, can she still be paid tight? And still honor God? And say, God, yes, still be consistent. When she needs money, she's hungry. Can still be honoring God? Say, yes, the family have not changed. They are changing. Faithfulness. Continue for me, one of God. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. That he will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory. Be strengthened with might. By his spirit in your inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. That he be rooted and grounded in love. Uh, in what? That he be rooted and grounded in love. That he be rooted and grounded in love. He be able to comprehend with all things. Listen, the way to comprehend with everybody and never get faint is grounded in love. Listen, sometimes I say, do you know why God designed that you don't forsake the garden of the saints? Everybody can pray in their house. But true maturity will never come in your room. True maturity will come when you come. And also Joseph says something. I tell you, in the church, there are a lot of errors. You test your love, Paul's. Ah, has my daughter matured in love? Joseph spoke ill into me. Come. Ah, maturity level is low. I'm, I'm trusting, I'm writing a book on spiritual maturity and, and growth. So it can be when you grow, you see angels, but maturity is not there. The Lord will tell you, follow this man. Next month, you are somewhere else. Maturity is not there. The grace to express what he spoke to you in the closet and to apply it is not there. That's maturity. Maturity is your ability to express what you have heard. Growth is you becoming like him. You are longing for him, but maturity is not expressing him outside. You have the right to be offended, but yes, you choose love. You say, ah, that's maturity. And maturity can only be seen in the public place. Do not forsake the garden of the saints. Do not forsake. Because meetings like this are very, very important. You don't forsake them. Because by this, something will happen. You say, ah, this person is not matured. Because of this, you are angry. Because of this, you are living. I am not matured. Whenever you find yourself, you also live when that thing happens again. I remember years ago, my spiritual father's father. Something happened between here and his spiritual father. He nearly left. And the Holy Ghost said, Stay. So if you live with this in your heart, whoever I give you as a father, you also live when something like that should happen. I allowed that to see what's in your heart before you are matured. So now you are with a man of God. A lot of things can happen between you. Your ability to still be faithful shows your maturity. Some of us behind us are scars. But yes, we express love. About wondering. 
what dimension this guy walking in. You cannot create a man walking in love. At the height of all maturity, love. You cannot create a relationship full of love. You can't. You can't. But for you to walk in this dimension, you must know the love of Christ. That pass it all. What will continue from you? You may be able to comprehend with all sins. What is the bread? So you may be able to comprehend with all sins. What's the bread? Saint, the love of God has dimensions. If you get angry to one let go to the height, there are dimensions. Bread. What's the bread? Length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ. And to know the love, to know the love of Christ. Not to know your love for him, but to know his love. Continue for me. Which passes knowledge? Which is the love of God passes knowledge. And that's why the love of God can say, well, I, I took an Uber. And the Uber driver was making an argument. I look at Christians today, they are sleeping about with this and this. And so, compare the Christian and the Muslim, who is more righteous? I loved. I said, the love of God would pass it knowledge. So far, the person is born again. Jesus loved the person. The Lord will take the person more than even the Muslim. But the person doesn't have the spirit of God. Then this one you cannot judge. That's why a prostitute can become a mighty man of God in the following day. It is he who calls. It is who justifies. Who are you therefore to justify the servants? So, and to know the love of Christ with pass, it passes knowledge. So can, that's why people fornicate and they can still enter into meetings and the Holy Ghost is still moving. So what happened? The love of Christ. It passes to it. The day you get to a point where you can put your hand on his love, then that's, it's not his love. If you can reason out his love, there's not his love left. His love passes knowledge, no matter the sins. Exactly. Let's reason together. Sins be as red as carrots. God the Lord will make us white as snow. That's his love. That's his love. And God wants the church to understand and know him. This is the love of God. You wake up in the morning, you've not prayed for two days. The devil is coming. You've not prayed, can you? He start laughing. He loves me. He start confessing. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Just that he loves me alone can make you end up praying for two hours without knowing that you are praying. He loves me. He loves me. No matter the mistake, he loves me. I'm not perfect, but he loves me. This will make you qualify. God qualifies men who understand his love for him. It doesn't matter the, it doesn't matter the sense. It doesn't matter whether you lied. It doesn't matter. I remember those days when I was growing up in the faith and little like I asked God for forgiveness 10 times. Sometimes I, because I've done something, tell me just to even hold my I cannot do it. So he loves me. If I preserve. The reason why I remember someone asked me, one, one of my sons came and said, Osafo, how do I come out from immorality? How do I come out? So you are sending to a message and you are saying, you must fast, you must pray and laugh. As a fasting, people fast and they still sleep with one another. Fasting, there are temporal solutions. The greater solution, he loves me. How can I do this wickedness against him? He loves me. I never fornicated in my life. I never felt messing up even after service. I never, not because I was showing myself. When I see the love of God, how can I bring this wickedness against Him? I'm leading a flock. People are looking up now, laying hands on them. How can I do this wickedness against God and His sons? That the Lord always delivered me. He loves me. Anyone who understands His love, who find it difficult to sin. Because the love of God will constrain your heart separately before you even sin. You constrain your heart. Love it. Let me just close our eyes. We are close. I just speak to him. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Think upon his love. God loves you. 
is not even the tithing and the giving. He loves you. We give him because we love him as well. We are just we are just responding to his love. What he has done. That's why I pay my tithes. That's why I give my first food. I love him. The other day, a lawyer came and said, which one is the greatest commandment? He said, the greatest commandment is that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your hearts. Talk about bendish.